Former New York Jets GM Mike Tannenbaum has strong Mike White opinions. He also has an idea on what a Mike White contract could look like for the Jets after the season. Could Mike White be the long-term option? Let's talk about it in today's Jake Asman show. Let's hit it and get it started. New York heads west to hit up Seattle on New Year's Day. It's all on the line as the calendar flips. Are these Jets playoff bound on the Puget Sound? You're writing the story of your own life. Never allow another man to hold a pen. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button down below. Super chat, baby. Cut the line. Can these Jets shot the football world? Now, let's talk about the New York Jets. This is the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go on a Wednesday. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. Big reminder, we've had a ton of content on the channel. We have done now seven shows going on four days, if you count this one. We had two on Christmas. We had two on Monday. We had two yesterday, and this is the first of what could be, depending on what happens today with the Jets, first of two shows here on Wednesday. So big thank you to everyone who's been watching the content. Certainly appreciate it. And if you could do me a huge favor and like this video and also hit the subscribe button, if you haven't, that will help this channel continue to grow. So I want you guys to hear with what Mike Tannebaum had to say. Now this interview was a couple of weeks back, but it didn't really get a ton of play. This was Mike Tannebaum who was a guest on Rich Samini's podcast flight deck. Now this interview happened right after the Buffalo Bills came, and Mike White got hurt, but he came back in the game. So Tannebaum was unaware, and we, as we all were, that Mike White was going to then miss the next, what, two games after that? He missed the Lions game, and then, of course, he missed the Jaguars game. So this was Mike Tannebaum discussing Mike White, also talking about Zach Wilson, but I find Tannebaum's analysis on what the contract would look like for White and just his viability to being a long-term option I find it fascinating. So this was Mr. T. I want Rich Samini. And we're looking ahead a little bit. We got Zach Wilson under contract for two more years on his rookie contract. And Mike White's an unrestricted free agent. If you're the GM, how do you handle this going into the offseason? Do you keep White? If so, how much? Do you, do you get rid of Wilson? Do you cut bait after only two years? To me, it's a fascinating question. So a couple, I mean, a lot to unpack here. First of all, I don't give up on Zach Wilson. Like the quarterback is a developmental position. You know, Jalen Hurts is the next most recent example. Daily, like so is Mike White. Mike White's a better player today than he was last year. Um, Geno Smith for Jet fans is a great example. Now that's really extreme, but the mm -hmm. quarterback fundamentally is a developmental position. I would be concerned by Zach Wilson's lack of respect of his teammates. And that's probably a story not germane for your question. But I would try to keep Mike White because I think definitely that position is really important. In terms of money, you know, it's probably somewhere between, I don't know, Chase Daniel and somewhere in the mid-teens because if I'm Mike White, a third of the NFL is going to need a quarterback next year. And, Rich, that includes some non-obvious teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, maybe the Green Bay Packers, and then, of course, you get into teams like Houston and Indy and the Saints. I mean, there's going to be so many. But you don't think Arizona is looking at, they're inconsistent play. Not that they're going to cut Kyle Murray, but, you know, Mike White's done a lot of really good things. And Chase Daniels made a lot of money not playing a lot of football uh, for a number of years. So I think he's going to have a pretty decent market. So if you were the Jets, you'd try to get him done in the mid-teens. So like, let's say he's like a three-year, $45 million contract. And you you can make that work salary cap-wise with Zach Wilson, of course. Uh, you know, he's got – it's a rookie contract, granted, but it's it's not insignificant amount of money. Yeah, it's too important not to. I mean, because you can't go into next year with a team that's um, improved in some ways um, with a question mark at the quarterback position. So even if it takes away from, you know, an offensive tackle or some other needs that they're going to have, I think it's too important not to address it. And, the, and they just have an open competition next summer between the two of them? Uh, I don't even know what's that. I mean, you, you go with, not, keep going with Mike White? Yeah, I think so. I mean, let's see how the rest of the year plays out. But Mike White does a lot of good things. I like his anticipation. I think he has good, not great arm strength. He makes some really good throws. That throw to Braxton Barrios 
that that not a lot of people can make that throw. So if I'm the Jets, I'm really encouraged by Mike White, and I'm thinking long and hard before I ever take him out. And that was Mike Tannenbaum talking about Mike White. You could tell Rich Samini must think that Mike White is just terrible because every time any Jet fan or now Mike Tannenbaum tries to bring up Mike White as a viable option for the Jets, Samini's like shocked every time. It was the same thing when Joe Beningo was on Rich Samini's podcast and Mike White's name came up and Joe was like, why not stick with Mike White? Everyone says Jimmy G. Well, how about Mike White? So that's something I picked up on. I don't think Rich is the biggest Mike White fan, which is fine. I mean, Mike White's got to prove over these next two games that he actually could be you know, a, a viable option for the Jets as their starting quarterback in 2023. You know, I agree with what a lot of what Tannenbaum said. You know, we'll start with the Zach Wilson angle real quick. I, I'd be surprised if the Jets kept him, but it wouldn't shock me if Zach's on the roster, at least going into training camp. His value is so low right now that if you are going to trade Zach Wilson, it might make sense to maybe build it back up over the summer next year and maybe a team has an injury at quarterback and they need to make a trade and you can get more for Zach if the Jets are dead set on moving off of him. But in in this monologue here, I want to focus on Mike White. If you tell me right now the Jets could get Mike White back on a three-year, $45 million contract, which was floated out there by the former Jets GM, I'd be okay with that. $15 million a year for a capable quarterback – I think that makes financially more sense than spending 30 plus million dollars on handsome Jimmy Garoppolo or having to bring in Derek Carr, trade him and and pay him what, like $35 million, I believe Carr is making this year. It's a lot of money for guys that I don't know if they're that great. Like they're competent, which is what we need right now. They're solid. I mean, Derek Carr has had a year where he's top three in MVP voting once, but that was was seven years ago. I mean, that was 2015. It was a long time ago. The last time Derek Carr was that good. He's been solid. Jimmy G's been solid. I'm thinking big picture from the Jets. If I can't get Aaron Rodgers or Lamar Jackson, I think if Mike White plays well over these next two games, he has a legit chance to be this team's answer at quarterback. Why not? It's not like he's old. He's 27 years old. He's 27 years old, and every time the guy has played, he's thrown for over 300 yards. I mean, I'll put it up on the screen, but here's the – Here's the compare and contrast between Mike White and Zach Wilson. I mean, these are the stats I always bring up. Points per game, significantly more with White. Yards per game, significantly more with White. Yards per play, up. Passing yards, significantly up. Sack rate is down. Why? Because Mike White gets the ball out quicker. So, yeah, obviously, you compare Mike White to Zach Wilson, it's it's not even close. The Jets are going to be comparing the price of Mike White compared to Jimmy G, and Derek Carr, Jacoby Brissett, Gardner Minshew. I'd like a white and Minshew quarterback room or white and Jacoby Brissett quarterback room. Assuming Mike White plays well. I, I think this is the reality for the Jets. Mike White could absolutely start for this team next year if the Jets win these next two games. How could you not give him the chance? Everyone said we needed to find out about Zach. We found out about Zach. They gave him 22 starts. I mean, Mike White started, what, seven career games? And he's only had one really bad game against the best defense in the NFL a year ago? I mean, unless you could get Aaron Rodgers here, or that type of quarterback that we're not thinking of. I don't know if I'm in love with paying Garoppolo, who also has an injury problem, 30 plus, $35 million a year. Is he that much better than when maybe Mike White on a $15 million per year salary? I'm not so sure. So it's on Joe Douglas to figure that out. Because as I've said a lot, missing on Zach Wilson will not cost him his job, nor should it. He's done enough good with the rest of the roster where he's earned the right, I believe, and I think most Jeff fans agree with me, to at least get another swing at the quarterback spot. But this is it for Joe Douglas. He's going into year five next year. Fourth full offseason, because the the first year doesn't really count when McCagden got fired and they hired Joe Douglas in late May after the draft and free agency. But Robert Sala's in year three. Douglas going into year five. They got to win next year. If they can't make the playoffs this year, there's a playoff mandate I can almost guarantee for next year. At some point, it's got to be about results with the Jets. So there's no doubt that there's a lot of pressure on Joe Douglas to get this right. But as I always bring up, it's not missing on Zach Wilson that's necessarily the problem. 
It's not having a plan to fix the mistake. Howie Rose found Jalen Hurts. Les Snead traded for Matt Stafford. Steve Keim drafted Kyler Murray. Bruce Allen drafted Kirk Cousins in the same draft as RG3. You got to have your contingency plan. And by the way, if it is Mike White, Douglas gets credit for that. That was a guy he found. That's a guy that the Jets themselves developed and drafted. Or not drafted, but uh, brought in and developed under the tutelage of this coaching staff. When you heard Tannenbaum in that clip, Mike White's a better quarterback now than he was a year ago. And obviously, in a very short sample size a year ago, at the awesome moment, awesome game against Cincinnati, got hurt against Indy, although he was playing well in that game. And then the bad game against Buffalo, and then that was it. So I really believe if Mike White looks competent and the Jets win these two games, Mike White is the guy for the Jets going into next year. And I'd be okay with that. Unless you could get Aaron Rodgers or someone of that ilk, Lamar Jackson. I don't see it, though. I'd be surprised. Hey, quick shout out. You guys see I'm wearing the U.S. Arlie Burke hat here. One of our great listeners. I met him at the Jets-Jaguars game in the parking lot. Rick Rick and his uncle Jeff. So I FaceTimed with Jeff, but I spoke to Rick in person. Rick is in the Navy for the last 14 years. He's active duty Navy. He's a huge fan of the show. Him and his uncle were nice enough to hand me this hat. They also gave me these Navy pins you can see right here, which are just incredible. These Jet Navy pins right here. So big shout out to everyone who is in who who is a member of our military, of course. But special shout out to Rick and his uncle Jeff. They're big fans of the show. And I promised them I'd wear this incredible hat on the show later this week. So shout out to you, Rick. And obviously, if I'm ever down in uh Northfolk, Virginia, I'm gonna hit him up because he said he'd give me a tour of the Navy ships down there. So I'm certainly excited for that. So big thank you to Rick, his uncle, and obviously shout out to everyone who watches our show that is in the military or who has served our country. We're going to open it up right now to your comments and questions, your thoughts on Mike Tannenbaum's love of Mike White and Tannenbaum saying three years, $45 million could be a fair contract for Mike White going forward. Let's see what you guys are thinking. Before we open it up, I want to talk about the Mojo app. Mojo is one of our great sponsors here. They are the sports stock exchange. Stock market opens up. Every day at 9 a.m. Eastern. So you download the app and you can start trading stocks, but they're players. So it's player stock. You build your portfolio, you trade in real time, you could buy and sell year round, and you could cash out at any time. Let's talk about Mike White. So Mike White's stock, just by being cleared over the last week, you could see it there on the screen. It has increased 13.41%. That is 58 cents. In the last week, Mike White hasn't even played. So Mike White's a great example of how, like, what happens off the field could impact the price of a player on the field. Mike White being cleared caused his stock price to go up. That's how the market reacted to the news that Zach Wilson not starting, Joe Flacco not starting, Mike White starting. I think it's a great example why Mojo is so much fun. If you're a Jeff fan, you've been following the news cycle. You thought Mike White was probably going to get cleared. Perhaps you bought his stock early knowing full well the market would move after he got cleared. So scan that QR code, download the Mojo app. It's coming to more states besides Jersey after the new year. So check it out. If you're a fan of Wall Street, if you're a fan of sports, this is the perfect app for you. All right, here we go. Comments, questions, anything that is Jet-related on your mind. Super Chats go first. So Eric starts us off and says, would you trade a haul for Lamar if possible? Yes. I don't think it's possible, though. But who wouldn't trade a haul for Lamar? An MVP quarterback in his prime? You have to do it. You have to do it because if you're the Jets, you're a quarterback away. And as much as we like Mike White, and we hope he could be the guy, you know what Lamar is. He's a great player. Does he have limitations? Yeah, but I'll, I'll worry about that when he's here. All right? Unlike in Baltimore, the Jets actually have wide receivers for him. Jeff writes in, who would you prefer to play in the wild card, Jake? I do not care who the Jets play. They can play the 07 Patriots. I don't care. Get to the playoffs, and it's a great it's a great season. I think they match up better with the Bills 
than they do the Chiefs for whatever reason. Personally. Because I think the Jets could beat the Bills. You know, they, they already did it once this year. Divisional opponents, so they know each other really well. I, I, th- I think the Jets going back to Buffalo is the better matchup for them. Mo the Jet fan says, what's up, Jake? Let's go Jets. Mike F and White for the rescue. Yeah, look, there there is uh, an enormous amount of pressure on Mike White on Sunday. But I'll say this. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It is what it is. It is what it is. I'm going to be that upset that Mike White is ends up not playing great. Like, the, the, the fact that the Jets are even alive is insane. It is what it is. You know, Mike White has his audition here these last two games. If it goes well, I believe the Jets could bring him back and he could be the guy for them. If it doesn't, I mean, they need a quarterback anyway. We knew that. R.A. writes in, I got an amazing Christmas gift for my wife. She got tickets to the Dolphins game. I want to go to a relevant game. We need to crush Seattle. You might be going to a game on Saturday next week then, R.A. You could be going to a game next Sunday night, depending on some of the outcomes around the NFL. I I hope it's winning you're in, R.A. That's awesome that you're going. Salem says, Jake, if we make the seventh th- seed versus the Chiefs, do you agree we would match up well against them? Yeah, I mean, on paper, I think the Jets could match up well, but they have Patrick Mahomes. I'd like to avoid that if possible. <laughs> let someone else deal with Mahomes. Or let the Jets deal with Mahomes in the championship game, right? Uh, I, I'll take my chances with the Bills again for the third time. They played them t- twice tight. To the, I can't speak this morning. They twice played them tight and won one of the games. I think they could beat Buffalo. Maybe an underdog, but I don't think it's crazy to envision the Jets having a chance to win that game late in the fourth quarter, which is all you would ask for if you're a wild card team going on the road in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, let's see. Prestige Shogun. Some of your comments today, guys. I'm just not reading them. If you write a dumbass comment, we're not getting to it today. I don't have the patience. Prestige says, I'd love to get the last seed just to see how close we truly are to competing for a title. I don't want to see the Dolphins, Pats, or Steelers over us. Pats and Steelers are boring to watch. I mean, unfortunately, Prestige, the Jets don't control their own destiny. Because they lost to New England twice, so shame on them. Now, I personally believe If the Jets win their next two games, they're in. Because I think New England will lose one of their next two. But if they don't, the Jets don't have a kick coming. They blew it. I mean, the fact that the Jets are even alive is incredible. But if New England were to win these next two and the Jets miss out, they don't deserve to go to the playoffs anyway. They blow it. Don't lose two games in December to the Lions and Jaguars in back-to-back weeks. Ted says, someone said get Frank Reich as the quarterback coach. Frank Reich, I believe, could be an offensive coordinator somewhere if he wants to. Uh, Why would he take a quarterback coach job? Spin Mag Save says, we need to move on from Zach. Which team would take him? I don't know. I, I, I don't think the Jets need to be in such a rush to deal Zach either. They don't. But Tampa Bay makes some sense. Arizona makes sense. Uh, I'm trying to go through a list of teams like maybe Green Bay, believe it or not, could make some sense depending on what happens here with Aaron Rodgers. Like there, there's going to be some teams here. Maybe Sean McVay and the Rams would acquire Zach Wilson in a trade as a backup to Stafford and McVay could develop him. I don't know. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that the Jets are just going to move on from Zach right away. Like Douglas could be stubborn here and be like, look, we still believe in his talent. We could develop him. What they can't do is play him right now, as Steve Young admitted. He's like, I thought Zach would get better by playing. He's so fundamentally broken right now. He he needs to take a step back before he sees the field again. Jet Flyer says, given Zach's rookie contract situation, is it fair to say they should keep him? Well, one NFL offensive coordinator told Jeremy Fowler that he could see the Jets keeping Zach till training camp next year, till the preseason, so they could try and build up his value again. You know, they did do that with McCagney with Teddy Bridgewater a number of years ago. 
They got a third round pick for Teddy. That was actually a very good move by McCagden for once. Darren says, why are we talking about the future already? Let's just win now and worry about the future quarterback in the offseason. Darren, let me tell you how this works. I come up with the topic on the show. You choose whether or not you want to watch it. We have done now seven shows going on four days. So we've spent a lot of time talking about the game, but by far and away, the number one question I get asked is about what the Jets are going to do at quarterback this offseason. So when a former Jets GM comes out and has a contract proposal for what Mike White's number would look like, I think it's worth addressing. Sean says, Mike White has two games to set his family up. How does he have no pressure? Uh, he has pressure on him. But I don't know if the pressure is going to get to Mike White. There was pressure on him in that Bears game, and he came out and he carved them up from the opening drive. There was pressure when the Jets were down 20-3, to and he carried them back in that game against Minnesota. I mean, Mike White's tough as you know what. He came back in that Bills game with what it turned out to be three fractured ribs. Guy's tough as nails. I think Mike White's ready for the pressure. Sarah writes in, if the Jets win, they're in. They can only control what they can control. I agree, Sarah. Look, it's not a guarantee, obviously. New England could win their next two. I'd be surprised, though, if they went into Buffalo with the Bills likely needing the game to be the number one seed in the AFC. And they beat Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. I'd be shocked, to be honest. Now, the ideal scenario, though, is that Miami just beats New England on Sunday. Because then the Jets could take the field in Seattle knowing, hey, we win. It's win and you're in for us next week, baby. Hey, we win. We control our own destiny. That's what you want, right? The Jets want to know going to kickoff at 4, 4.05 Eastern on Sunday, do we control our own destiny? And the answer will be yes if Miami beats New England. Jake writes in, how do they get the running game going? Why not throw James Robinson in the mix? Do they think he stinks. He has no burst. Now, part of the issue with the Jets running game, going through some numbers here, the offensive line has been terrible run blocking. Dwayne Brown, in fact, ranks 67 out of 67 in qualified tackles in run blocking, according to ESPN stats and information. Lakin Tomlinson's not much better. He's 65 out of 68. For qualified guards. Nate Herbig also ranks in the bottom five in run block win rate over the past two games at his position. So between Brown, Tomlinson, McGovern, and Herbig, four of your five guys on the offensive line rank in the bottom five in run block win rate. That's a problem. I don't know how that magically gets better with Mike White at quarterback. I think what the Jets are going to have to do is use Mike White's ability to complete a short pass, something Zach Wilson struggles with, to kind of set up their passing attack downfield. Or maybe, as we saw in the Bears game, as we saw in the Vikings game with Mike White, the short pass will kind of serve as a run game for the Jets. So I would play the over on receptions for Bam Knight and Michael Carter. We could see Mike White having to check it down to those guys on first and second down to kind of get the, the Jets version of a run game going because this offensive line seems like they're shot right now from a run blocking standpoint. You got two guys playing through injuries and in Dwayne Brown and George Fant. And let's be honest, Lakin Tomlinson has been an underwhelming free agent signing. They paid this guy to be a Pro Bowl level player. He's been everything but. Tony G writes in, Jake, just listen to the beginning. Agree. If White looks good, White and a vet like Minshew and Brissett. Yeah, a lot of it's on Mike White. It's in his hands. Alex with a super chat. He cuts the line. Thank you, Alex. What type of coaching changes do you think get made to the offense if the Jets don't win the next two games? LaFleur on the hot seat going into next year. I think everyone's on the hot seat going into next year. This would be year three of this regime next year. Year three of the staff. They got to make the playoffs next year. Joey says, I was at the 09 Jets-Bengals game, the win and we're in towels, LOL. 
Yeah, let's hope we get to Miami next week where it's winning you're in. We'll be waving the towels, baby. Let's go. This is the towel the Jets gave out to all the fans who got pneumonia watching Zach Wilson implode on Thursday. Let's keep going here. We have uh, open phone lines, too, for those who want to join our Gus Buster hotline. Bonesy writes in. The next two games will tell the story for Mike White. If he plays well, he's staying. He's proved to be weatherproof. He's 27 and has the fan base already. Why risk Carr and Jimmy folding to New York City pressure? I don't know if the pressure would be a problem for those guys. But it, 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 it's really as simple as, are those guys that much better than Mike White making double the amount of money? That's the question. Carl says, I don't think LaFleur is on the hot seat yet. The scheme works with competent quarterback play. I agree. This is why this is why Mike LaFleur is not on the hot seat. These numbers you see on the screen. He's on the hot seat, as is Robert Sala and the entire coaching staff going into year three. But the reality is this offense is competent with every quarterback not named Zach Wilson. Josh Johnson ran this offense well a year ago. Joe Flacco last year played relatively well in his brief appearances last year. Obviously, he stunk in two of the three games, but against the Browns, he was good. Joe Flacco's game against the Browns. Zach Wilson's never had that game against as a Jet quarterback. So, some of it's just on the quarterback, ultimately. Muhammad writes in. Jake, the Pats will lose their last game against the Bills. First, they're at home. Second, the Bills will be fighting for the first seed. Kansas City, the Sharks smelling blood. I agree. Muhammad, I've said that over and over. I believe the Jets win these two games they're in, but if they're not, they don't have a kick coming. I don't want to hear, ah, oh, the Jets got didn't get a break because New England somehow won their last two games. No, the Jets got a break to even be alive right now. They should be dead. All right, they should be dead. You lose two games in December to the Lions and the Jaguars at home. You don't deserve to go to the playoffs. The Jets have a second lease on life. They will earn the right to get in if they win their next two and New England loses one. But if New England wins both, Jets don't have a kick coming. Alex writes, in the way Zach's mom slash family have handled the situation, see his dad's Twitter likes to, tells me New York's too big for them. They're not mentally equipped. New York's not for everybody, Alex. New York's not for everybody. Blaming Zach Wilson's parents, though, is weak. How would your parents act if everyone is, is destroying your son publicly? That's what I'll say about that. G-Star said the Jets need to use the tight end more. I believe they will now that Mike White's at quarterback. Hawk writes in, bottom five O-line, but we're a quarterback away from winning it all right. Uh, Hawk, your, your comments today, we're just, we're not going to do it, man. We're not going to do it, all right? We don't have the patience. We're not going to do it. The Jets' offensive line is missing three starters who are down for the year. All right? this is The, the line is obviously not good right now. There's a reason why. <laughs> like, and let's not sit here and pretend like the offensive line can't get fixed in the offseason and draft and free agency and the return of ABT and Max Mitchell. We'll take some of your calls here coming up. Brian says, can you recap what Tannenbaum said? Go back to the beginning of the video to hear his full quote. Essentially, he likes Mike White, thinks that there's a good chance the Jets should just keep him pay him a three-year, $45 million contract because Mike White does a lot of good things. Teammates love him. Toughness is great. And he looked at the free agent market and essentially was like, are you really upgrading that much more when you have Mike White already on your team? Alex says, to the people mentioning Russell Wilson, no, just no. Russell Wilson, get out of here. Right Hero says, what happens if the Dolphins and Patriots draw? Uh, if the Dolphins and Patriots draw, the Jets need to win two games and they're in. Because think about it. They would finish with a better record than the Patriots at that point. Because they would have more wins.
Vinny in the jet says, Jake, I love the Mike White story, but I'm not sure the rest of the AFC will take us seriously if, if we are saying he's the guy next year. They won't, Vinny, but who gives a flying F? Who cares? The rest of the AFC won't take us seriously. Prove it on the field, man. The Jets, uh, everyone thought the Jets were going to be a joke this year. How'd that work out? They smashed their win total over months, uh, you know, a month and a half ago. Who cares? If they internally believe Mike White's their best option, then that's good enough. Just like the Niners with Brock Purdy. No one took them seriously when he started playing. And now look, they're a legit contender with a rookie quarterback who was picked as the final pick in the draft this year. It is what it is. Unless they add Aaron Rodgers, there's not going to be many people picking the Jets to win the Super Bowl next year regardless. Chef writes in, Jake, two questions. What do you think we'll get for Zach? And what which game do you think New England will lose for us to get in? I think they definitely lose the Buffalo. What do I think the Jets will get for Zach Wilson? Probably a pick that could be like a conditional fourth rounder. I mean, he's got very little value right now, folks. Sam Darnold had more value because Sam Darnold's issues you could blame on the Jets and Adam Gase. Throwing the guys that wouldn't be on any other NFL roster besides the Jets. Having a horrendous head coach. That was one of the worst we've ever seen. So Sam got a pass, even though he sucked in his third year with the Jets. And then he sucked in his fourth year with the Panthers. He had, what, nine touchdowns, 13 interceptions last year? So Darnold actually had more value because you could you could make excuses for his poor play. You can't make excuses for Zach Wilson's poor play because the numbers don't lie. This is just Mike White to Zach Wilson in 2022. If you go back even further to 10 starts without Zach Wilson since last year, the Jet offense with quarterbacks named Joe Flacco, and Josh Johnson included. They averaged 21.5 points per game, 315 net yards per game from a passing standpoint, and total yards is 411. So Zach's value is very low right now to answer your question. Let's go to our first caller of the day. Let's go to Doug. Doug, you're first up on the show. How you doing, Jake? What's up, Doug? Not much. So uh, let me be clear. I don't want to fire Salah. I think he's a great coach. But would you consider just like giving Sean Payton a Blake paycheck or no? Not at all. No, I I, I wouldn't do that because you would have to trade drive picks too to get him. It wouldn't be as simple oh. as just bringing him in and, and paying him whatever. Okay. And then just like uh, obviously with Mike White back, the level of confidence grows. Um, Say we do win these two games. How many playoff games do you think we can win? A great question. It depends on the matchup, to be honest with you, Doug. I mean, I don't know. Once you're in, you have a chance. And with this Jets defense, they'll have a chance. But like, if, if they win more than one, that's already an incredible accomplishment. I, I mean, yeah. you're going to talk about having to go to most likely either Buffalo or Kansas City wild card weekend. I, I'd honestly, I, obviously, I, I think I feel better if we played Buffalo in the first round than Kansas City. Not saying that we don't match up well. Like with our defense, I think we can match up with anybody, but just we know Buffalo well. And you shot Josh Allen. I think what Josh Allen hasn't even thrown for 400 combined yards yet against us. So I would feel much better playing Buffalo, but I'll just all big ifs. Doug, I don't care who they play, just get in. But if I had to, you know, as you said, you know, break down the matchup here, I would, uh, I would much rather play the Bills just because the Jets have shown the ability to, as you said, to slow down Josh Allen. The two worst games that Josh Allen has had have obviously been against the New York Jets this season. There's no doubt. Let's go to Gary, who's next up on our show. We got open phone lines if any Jet fan wants to call in. What's up, Gary? Hey, Jake. First time calling in. Let's do a show like every day. So, Thank you, Gary. Appreciate that. Yeah, so I, I just want to talk about the quarterbacking, like drafting in the first round in general and giving Joe Douglas a pass. Like, it, it's a crapshoot. Like, we know that we go into it every year. There's always, like, five, six guys to talk about. Everyone drafts a quarterback in the first round, and only one or two of them pan out. So. It happened to the Jets. I mean, the Bears took Mitch Trubisky over Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Mahomes went 10 overall. Nine other teams, including the Jets, passed on him. So you can't talk about these generational type guys like, oh, looking back, like we should have. Like, of of course, of course, we should have taken Mahomes over uh, Adams that year. So, you know, that's just one thing where you got to give these GMs a pass. You're going from the college to the NFL. Like, it's it's completely different. We all know that. Um, the 
you know, as far as Mike White goes too, like the quarterbacks develop faster. Like look, look at Wilson coming in. No one expected him to take the starting job. Prescott and even even Purdy, like Mister Irrelevant, coming in and, and just being competent under under Shanahan. And like it, it happens. Like you don't know what these guys have until you put them out there uh, in, in the fire. So. It's such um, a crapshoot. You're 100 yeah, percent right. It, it is. So, so you, you just never know. Like, give 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 him another chance to, to find the right quarterback. Like, he, he built the rest of the team. You got you got the other what 20, 21 of twenty two positions that are out there right so far. Well, you um, know what, Gary? Real quick, just to, to follow up on that. Like, I was thinking about this. Like, look at this team right now. Other than two players that play significant snaps, C.J. Mosley and Quinn Williams, the entire rest of the team was put together by this front office by this general yeah. manager. Yeah, I'm the the it's, it's incredible. Like, and and from from in in one year, I mean, he's been there a few years, but the roster last year compared to this, it's just like night and day. Like, and 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 someone talked about taking us seriously. Like, no one wants to play the Jets. If we score more than twenty points, we're gonna win. Like, you know, like our defense is is that locked down. I mean, sure, we give up a chunk play here or there, but no one wants to go into get no go against the secondary. We have the pass rush. Like, it, it's it's a it's a team built for the for the postseason. Um, I'm granted we're losing Brees sucks and and we don't have a you know making, you know having uh, Carter. I don't know why he fell off so badly, but um, you know we need the, we need the run game to come back and I'm sure mm-hmm. line all all the other issues. But still, this team is built for the playoffs. And then and then with Shanahan, like what he's doing with Brock Purdy, like do you think that like I know I know he loved he loved Zach Wilson, like he wanted to trade with the Jets to get Zach Wilson instead of uh, um, who did he get who did he get uh, Lance. So do you think like do you think with the Niner connection and um, and just the fact that Shanahan can actually develop quarterbacks and might take that on as a challenge? You think do you think he'd, he'd uh, reach out for Zach Wilson? Yeah, I, I, Gary, good call, man, and, and thanks for making your first call here on the show. I I think that I might reach out. I don't want to just give Zach Wilson away though necessarily. Like we'll see. I'm also not convinced the Niners definitely would for this reason. They got a lot of quarterbacks, man. You got Purdy, you got Trey Lance. I mean. Uh, does Zach Wilson make sense for them? I'm not so sure. That might take them out of it. Open phone lines. If anyone else wants to call in, good call there by Gary. Ryan writes in, Jake, when will the Zach truthers move on? It's embarrassing at this point and ruining the fun of a potential playoff berth. Ryan, I got news for you, man. If the Zach truthers are, are, are ruining the fact the Jets are about to play their, their biggest meaningful game in January in seven years, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Who cares about the Zach truthers? Even Steve Young, who was a Zach truther, admitted he was wrong. I mean, what more do you need? It is what it is. I like Zach personally. I I think he's got immense talent. It's not working right now. And he's got to be accountable for that. Unfortunately. Uh, But the reality is, I think most Jet fans are in agreement that Mike White right now gives his team the best chance to win. There's hope that now that he's back and could play quarterback for them on Sunday. And big picture, what they do in the offseason is going to be on Joe Douglas to figure it out. But the Zach stuff gets exhausting after a while because you could use facts with these people. They don't want to listen. But I'm enjoying the hell out of this season, Ryan. I mean, I really am. Like The Jets have a second lease on life, and the best quarterback on their team could play on Sunday, which is exciting. Michael says, Mims active question mark. Run them on go routes, back up the safeties. Uh, we'll find out about Mims' availability today when Salah speaks. It'll be interesting to see if he practices. If he practices, he's likely going to play Sunday. He'll be back. Kevin says, I'm not enjoying December. Yeah, none of us are, but the reality is let's enjoy January. JT writes in, Jake, does it feel like Bam Knight has fell off a tad since his first few games? It seems like he's breaking less tackles than his first two starts. So I I, I gave the numbers earlier, JT. I, I think it's the offensive line, not Bam Knight. So the Jets, four of their five starters currently rank in the bottom five the last couple games in run block win rate. That's just not good enough. Gaspard writes in, Jake, do you think we should adjust our defense? Recently, teams have been gassing us at the run because our D-line plays so wide. I'm more concerned about how you know the Jaguars seemingly ran the same play with Evan Ingram as the Lions ran with their backup tight end uh, on that fourth and one conversion. So that's got to be an adjustment the Jets are ready for. Despite all that, 
This is a Jet defense that had a, quote, bad game against the Jaguars. They only allowed 19 points. You know, I expect the Jet defense to, to play well Sunday against the Seahawks. It's going to be on Mike White and this offense to, you know, score 21-plus points and win the game. Abby says, what players would you cut slash trade? I, I think it's a it's a strong possibility they release Dwayne Brown, save money there, or he just retires. Corey Davis, I believe, is a guy they probably release as well. I know the wide receiver market has exploded, and Corey Davis is actually, you know, a, a pretty reasonable contract. The problem is he, has, he never he doesn't play. He's always hurt. I could take that $12 million and, and spend it elsewhere and try and bring in someone else or draft someone that could be more reliable. And I believe Carl Lawson needs to restructure his deal. Otherwise, he's going to get released as well. Chris says, Zach can't throw the defense with stack in the box. That's part of the issues of the run game, too. But the offensive line's not blameless here. They got to do a better job, period. It hasn't been good enough. I mean, you want to know something sad about the Jets, uh, you know, offensive line this year. And the Jets running game as a whole. Brees Hall still leads the Jets in rushing yards. Guy hasn't played since late October. And he leads the Jets, Jets in rushing yards right now. That's pathetic. Chris says, cut the punter. Uh, Brayden Man's gone. He's gone. He should be gone now. The fact that they had 10 days to bring in more punters and they did it, I'm going to go I'm going to go livid. Uh, I I'm going to be livid on Sunday, the first shanked punt by Braden man. Let's take a call before we get back to some more of your comments, your questions, and your super chats. Big thanks to everyone watching here on a Wednesday morning. Let's go to JJ who joins us now. What's up JJ? Yo yo, what's going on? How are you, JJ? Don't you know? Make sure you're, uh, you know, you're safe on the road there. I, yeah, I, I, eyes are on the road. You don't got to worry about me. Uh, All right. But here's the thing. So, um, I, I don't think the the people in the chat are going to be too fond of what I'm about to say. But you know what? Uh, when you go back and look at, and I'm not saying Joe Douglas needs to be fired or anything like that. But when you go back and look at his draft classes, this he only has one good draft class, which was this year. So we can't keep acting like Joe Douglas was this gift from God. I mean, to be honest with you, if we don't make the playoffs next year, we he has to be gone. That That's number one. And then on top of that, uh, we know he whiffed on Zach Wilson, but we don't even know if Robert Sala is the right guy to lead this team. And so I'm going to keep saying this until I'm blue in the face. But if we don't beat Seattle, I think we have to I, I think we have to go a different direction at, at head coach because this team is too good to not beat the Seattle Seahawks, especially now that we have Mike White back, there's no more excuses for this team. There's literally no more excuses. All we are asking for is a win in Seattle so that we have the, the opportunity to possibly still be alive uh, the last week of, uh, of the season. So um, it, it's win or I, I need a new, a new coach. I'm sorry. JJ, good call, man. So a couple things. One, I think it's unfair to say the 2021 draft wasn't good. All right, AVT is a all pro level player. Elijah Moore is a really good receiver you got in the second round. Michael Carter had a very good rookie season. He's a good running back. I know he hasn't played well of late, but he's he's a nice complimentary piece to Brees Hall. How about Michael Carter in the fifth round, the slot corner they got at a Duke? He's been really important on this defense. You know, Brandon Eccles was a nice depth piece that the Jets got also in that draft. 200th overall, sixth round pick. Obviously, Zach Wilson looks like a huge bust. So I can't sit here and tell you that draft's amazing when the second pick in the draft was Zach Wilson. But a little unfair to say that draft class was bad. 2020 was bad. All right. Becton being hurt is why that hasn't worked out. You know, Denzel Mims has not worked out overall as a second round pick. Ashton Davis has not been great as a third round pick. I, you, you're spot on with 2020. I think a lot of that was Gase and his staff's influence over the draft, but not an excuse. That class should be better. Unfair to kill Douglas for 2021, and 2022 might be the best in team history. He's earned more time. He has. This roster 
is made up of every player he brought in besides C.J. Mosley and Quinta Williams as far as guys that play significant snaps. So Douglas, I believe, has earned the right to more time, and I know you said you didn't want to fire Douglas, so it, I'm not going to get on you for that. As far as Robert Sala, if they lose to the Seahawks, I'm not changing the head coach after two years. Not when the, Brees Hall got hurt, ABT got hurt, Max Mitchell got hurt, Becton got hurt. Not when Zach Wilson was historically bad this year. He's on the hot seat, though, in year three, as is Douglas. But if the Jets lose to the Seattle, I'm not going to fire the head coach. I, I think that's too reactionary. The, the Jets need to stop firing coaches every two to three years. I really want Salah to work out. He gets a third year to, to in a make-or-break season. You know, big picture this year was not going to be about the playoffs anyway. Your expectations change when you start 5-2, and two, but you also have to acknowledge a big reason why they started 5-2 and two was because of the dominance of Brees Hall and AVT. So... Obviously, th they need to go out there and they need to have a massive 2023 if they fail to make the playoffs this year. But I think it's too reactionary to say fire Salah. Way too reactionary. Let's go to Chris, who writes in. Jake, we can't trade Wilson. Glazer missed it. Over the cap shows a trade will accelerate the prorated bonus and kills the cap. It costs way more, less to bench him and get basic mechanics back. Miss you. Uh, Chris, I just don't know if they want Zach Wilson around because they can save some money by trading him. And they might want a different backup quarterback to whoever is the starter next year. I mean, have they lost all faith in Zach to a point where they don't even want him to be the number two quarterback going into next year? If, let's say, hypothetically, Mike White is the one or Jimmy Garoppolo is the one. Muhammad says, Jake, who the hell wants Salah out? I mean, not me. Not me. Sean says, people forget Becton was flashing like a superhero during his rookie year. Look, Mekhi Becton had a good rookie year. He did. He also had some injuries that year, too, though. This has been a problem now his entire career. At least he played through injury issues as a rookie. He hasn't played the last two years. The Jets cannot go in the next year relying on Mekhi Becton. He could be on the team and compete for the swing tackle spot in training camp. He's not on the team as a penciled-in starter like he was this year. Michael says, this team is too good. They've been overachieving all year. I think Seattle's going to roll over at home for us. Seattle's not going to roll over for the Jets, but the, the Seattle Seahawks are, 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 are struggling right now. Like, you're getting them at the right time. All right, this is the Seattle Seahawks defense that's near the bottom of the league. This is a Seattle uh, football squad that's 7-8. and eight. They've lost three straight games. They're three and uh, four at home this year. So I, I, I just, I don't fear the Seattle Seahawks. Like the Jets should beat them. They're a favorite on the road. What does that tell you? You know, like uh, Geno Smith, who's had overall a very good year. He's thrown at least one interception, I believe in five straight games now. So it's going to be on the Jets defense to force a turnover and it's going to be on Mike White to lead this offense. And I think he can. The Jets should win on Sunday. They should. Sarah says, where are the Zach truthers not brave enough to call? And they never are. It's the same crap every time, Sarah. The Zach truthers come in. They berate Mike White because their only argument for Zach Wilson is that we got to tear down the other guy who's actually better than Zach Wilson. And then they never show up and, and articulate why Zach's this great quarterback. Alex says, Jake, if we can get Sean Payton, would you hire Lord, liar him or hire him? I guess that's what you meant as a head coach. Yeah, if I could add Sean Payton right now, I would do it. You can't. The people who not realize how this works, clearly they don't because I keep getting asked about this. You need the trade for Sean Payton. The Saints aren't just going to give him away. They have his rights through 2024. You really want to trade away a first-round pick and then some for Sean Payton? 
Has Robert Sala been that bad of a head coach? No, of course not. Socrates says, Jake, you used to be a Zach truther. Uh, no, I didn't, Socrates. I'm a Jet fan who was trying to be patient with the second pick in the draft because I also didn't realize Mike White was capable of being good. My argument with Zach was, he, look, he's the best option they have at quarterback. He needs to play so we could find out about him. That was my argument with Zach. That's not being a Zach truther. That's being a realistic fan, all right? When you have new information, you adjust your opinion. You don't just blindly defend a guy because you want to be right. I, I'm a Jet fan. I don't care if I'm right or wrong. I want to see the team win. Mike White gives the team the best chance to win. It's not about being a Zach truth. It's about how they took this kid second overall, and when he missed the first three games due to injury and then came back, I was going to be patient with him as the Jets were trying to evaluate what he was. But that ship sailed after that New England debacle, and he took zero accountability at the press conference, which lost members of that locker room, and they had two yards of offense in that second half. It's hard to come back from that. Michael writes in, bringing in a new coach means new systems and adjustments, means a throwaway year, new GM tearing it down, rebuilding, no thanks, we finally have something competent. They do. They do. They're not They're, they're not firing Robert Sowell. If the Jets do that, that'd be the dumbest crap ever. Larry writes in, it's a good thing you don't care about right or wrong because you're wrong. What am I wrong about, Larry? You're the guy who comes in every day, says the Jets are going to lose 50 to nothing to every team they play, yet you watch the show every day, Larry. So you tell me what I'm wrong about. Zach Wilson's great. Have we somehow got this wrong, Larry? Zach Wilson's played unbelievable this year. It's everyone else's fault besides Zach. Please enlighten me, Larry. Please enlighten me how Zach Wilson's is this mistreated character by the Jets organization. Please tell us, Larry. Please hey, call in, Larry. You won't because you're a coward. You are a coward, sir. You have nothing ever productive to say. In fact, you waste everyone's time in this chat. Please tell me how I'm wrong. Bonesy, save us, my guy. You're up next in the Gus Buster hotline. What's up, my guy? I'm at the food store with the kids. Listening to some of these people talk, it's, it's hilarious. As a Jet fan, how could you, I mean, ro fire Robert Sala? If Robert Sala, if we win these next two games, he's going to be coach of the year. Fire? I mean, fire Joey D. Has he made one bad trade in his career? The, 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 the cards aren't even still out completely on Zach. He's still young and could be developed by a different team. We don't even know what he's going to be, but... What has Joey D done wrong? As a Jeff fan of all the, the drafts we've had, I mean, I have Vernon Golston jerseys, Dean Milner. I used to be on big, big on Dexter McDougal and these guys. All these different guys we always miss on draft picks. The, he hits on so many picks. This year alone is is wild. How do you feel about? How do you feel about? His his drafts the past. If you're a Jet fan for ten years, his past three drafts have been incredible. Yeah, the bones you could call, man, and uh, appreciate you 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 calling in from the uh, the the grocery store there. That's awesome. Uh, Joe Douglas ultimately has earned the right to continue to be the team's GM, even though he seemingly has missed on Zach Wilson, because the rest of the roster was built by him. This team's competing for the playoffs here with a second year coach despite having awful quarterback play for most of the year. And other than Quinn and Williams and C.J. Mosley, the entire rest of the roster was put together by this GM. Jeff fans got to be a little patient. Has Joe Douglas been perfect? No, but no GM's perfect. And I I'll repeat what I said earlier. He'll be defined by what he does after Zach Wills. Like Howie Roseman didn't get fired because he missed on Carson Wentz because he was able to find Jalen Hurts. Howie Roseman didn't get fired because he took Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson because he, he was able to go out there and he traded for A.J. Brown. He drafted Devontae Smith. Like, no GM bats a thousand. But I'll take Joe Douglas over a lot of other options out there in the NFL and certainly in Jets history. It's not even close compared to the Isics and the McCagnans of the world. 
So we got to be a little patient. The team's still going in the right in the right direction, and it's not easy changing the culture of the Jets. What Robert Sala is trying to do. All right, this team's seven and eight. They should be better, yes, but they're not, and we know why. We know why the quarterback has regressed sadly. Now they got Mike White back. They got ten days to prepare for the Seahawks. Go out there and try and win this game on Sunday. They should win this game on Sunday. I think we all have a right to be very disappointed if they don't. A bear on YouTube writes in with a super chat. The narrative that Salah can't coach quarterbacks came from Tiki. I think it's an unfair narrative to this point. I don't know if Zach Wilson would be good anywhere else based on what we've seen so far. And Steve Young, Zach Wilson truther number one. Finally saw the light yesterday. Alex writes in, how would you rank the following in terms of likelihood next year? Zach traded, Zach cut, Zach QB3 behind quarterback competition, Zach QB2 behind Rodgers. I think Zach gets traded, Alex. I think they gave him a fresh start somewhere else. Gaspard says, hey, Jake, I wasn't the highest on LaMarcus Joyner, but I think our defense is missing the ball hawk ability. How do you feel about him? Yeah, look, I think getting him back will be important for this team. They haven't lost these games because of not having Joyner, but you'd like to see him out there. Let's see. Notice that guy, Larry, still has yet to say why Zach Wilson's this great quarterback that's been failed by the Jets. You got nothing to say, Larry, you coward. Chris writes in. Thank you for the super chat, Chris. 20 plus million to trade Wilson. Wilson, third string versus purging 20 in player salaries and leaving no money for White or a new quarterback. Jake, please reconsider the Wilson trade. Love your show. Go to over the cap. It, it, it behooves them to trade Zach Wilson rather than straight up cut him. It does. They actually will save money by trading him rather than cutting him. And it doesn't make sense to carry him as your quarterback three at the salary he's at. So we just vehemently disagree with this, the, the, the resource allocation there, Chris. I think they probably trade him, give him a, a fresh start. And Zach Wilson only has $9.8 million guaranteed left on his contract. There'll be a team out there that thinks they could develop him into a competent starter one day, or maybe he could be their backup. Someone will want him. Jason writes in, is it me or the media constantly trying to back Sal into a wall to make him say what they want, especially Connor? Yeah, the, the, the media is asking the questions that they know Sal can't answer. When they ask Salah about Zach Wilson, you think he's going to come out and say, yeah, he's a bust. We screwed that one up. He has to say what he said. If you notice Salah's wording, though, when he talked about Zach the other day, it was, you know, Zach's still a part of our future. He didn't say he is the future. It's a noticeable difference in what Salah has said about Zach. It is what it is. We know the situation. Zach Wilson can't play right now. He's, he's, he's shot. His confidence is shot. You see it. Doug says we'd have 10 wins if Brees and ABT are healthy. Agreed. Obviously, injuries play a big part in every NFL team season. But we can't sit here and deny the Jets have had themselves some catastrophic injuries compared to some other teams. They have. Let me catch up with some super chats here because I think I missed a few by accident. So hold on one second. We'll take some of your calls here in a moment as well on the Gus Buster hotline. This one is from Chode who writes in. What a name. Jimmy G's way too fragile and Shanahan doesn't even want him. I wish people would drop the idea that he's a viable option. Our standards are too low. Well, he's an option because he's been to a Super Bowl before Chode. He's been to a championship game before. He wins when he plays, and he's at least competent. Do I love Jimmy G? No. Do I think he could be a solid quarterback for the Jets? I do. 
Do I think they should start a lot higher than Jimmy G? Yeah, they start with Aaron Rodgers. That's the first phone call. But we'll see. T. Rivera's got a super chat. Jake, do you think late coach Knapp would have been better for Zach than Calabrese? Secondly, I think Zach wasn't ready for the NFL. Your thoughts? I mean, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I'll tell you what. If the Jets didn't take him second overall, he would have went third overall. So, and it, I mean, can you really fault Zach Wilson for leaving early when you had a chance to be a top five pick and you went second overall? No. As far as Greg Knapp, yes. There's no doubt Greg Knapp would have been better for Zach than Rob Calabrese. And that's not disrespectful to Rob Calabrese. Greg Knapp has had a 20-plus year coaching career and is highly regarded as a quarterback guy. Alex says, Jake, did you listen to Samini's podcast and believe what he said about the conflict of Salas less Lafleur being out on Zach versus Douglas not wanting to let go? I, I mean, Douglas by nature, you would think, would not want to just move on from Zach blindly, but I don't think Joe Douglas, knowing his job is on the line going into next year, is going to force Zach to play over trying to bring in a quarterback. This is Douglas's one opportunity to be a GM. Most GMs don't get two chances. I don't think he's going to go down with the Zach Wilson sinking ship. If everyone else is telling him, you got to go out there and find a different quarterback. Super chat from Ja. JD built the 49ers AFC. Okay, quarterback equals playoffs. Jets are fine. The Jets are not there yet. They got to make the playoffs first. Win these next two games. I see your point. There are some similarities, but they got to win the next two games first. Back to your calls we go. Let's go international. Jason. From Jerusalem, up next on the show. What's up, Jason? Hey, Jake. First of all, I don't know who went, looked it over the cap, but they gave you the wrong numbers. I'm on it now. If they uh, trade Zach post June 1st, there's actually a cap savings and not an overall cap hit. That's what I thought. I, I didn't know it off the top of my head, so I didn't want to comment on it. So, I mean, there'd still be a hit, but overall, between paying him and the savings, it would be $3.8 million. But if they do it uh, pre June 1st, we're talking about an excess hit of one point eight over the paying him. So they're going to wait till so, after June 1st to trade him is what you're telling me. Yeah, it makes sense. So that's uh, that's first of all. But uh, here we are. The last two weeks of the season, we have games that are uh, meaningful. This is really what we wanted. As painful as it is at how we got here, but you know we got to call the season a success at this point. And in my opinion, the teams we need to root for this week are we need to root for Buffalo and Kansas City. Because if Buffalo and Kansas City both win, then Buffalo game matters in week 18 because they're going to play for the bye. Exactly. If Buffalo loses, then Cincy leaps them. And if Kansas City loses and Buffalo lose, Buffalo wins, they've already clinched it. And I have zero faith in Jacoby Brissett or whoever Miami's putting out there. But I do have faith in Mac Jones truly screwing up and handing the Dolphins a win. So that game's kind of a pick in my mind. It'd be Teddy Bridgewater, by the way, not Jacoby Brissett. Oh, sorry, right. It was last year was Brissett. Bridgewater, either yeah. way. Yeah, look, good call, Jason. I, I, I'm with you. I mean, look, I, I personally don't see Kansas City losing to Denver. I believe the last week of the season is going to matter for the Buffalo Bills. And they're at home against a Patriot team that hasn't beaten a team with a winning record all year. We'll see. Uh, New England's grossly overrated. We fear them because they're New England. Ah, Larry with a great comment here. The team's one and five since they decided to sacrifice Zach's development to make a run. Larry, since you're the leader of the Zach Wilson truthers, clearly, and you know nothing about football, why don't we hear from Steve Young admitting that he is dead wrong about Zach Wilson? Here's Steve Young talking about why Zach Wilson, simply put, cannot play right now because him being out there on the field is actually not helping his development. It's hurting his development. Here's a long, detailed answer from Zach Wilson, truther, Steve Young on Zach's problems. Um, fundamentally, Ty, is that he's he's not getting better playing. The things that he needs to, the, the, I say commodity things, the things that he's got to be able to do that are kind of rank and file NFL quarterback stuff is not getting done. And I always say, well, play through it because you you're going to get better. So something Zach needs to fix Zach. Like, and there's something that's keeping him from 
you know, being able to do the what I call commodity work of NFL quarterbacking that has to get done. The throws that need to get done, like, just get them done. You should be 10 for 10 on those. And you should be able to, you know, uh, be very efficient and lift it. There's an emotional part of it, too. I think the last game was uh, rough for us to watch because looking into his eyes, you could see that I'm not sure that Zach had the answer or even the thought of how I was going to try to answer this. And so I think the team recognizes the talent, but also recognizes that something's not right. And to get onto the field and not get better each week, because if you're, I've always said, that's why I say you got to play. Because mm-hmm. if you're any, if you if you're going to be capable of playing in the NFL and being productive, no matter what the odds are, horrible offense, bad offensive line, no weapons, no receivers, no, you send up a flare. Young players send up flares that tell you he's going to survive. He's going to be okay. He's going to make it. And when those flares are not sent up, that's really about you or me. It's about Zach. Like he needs to fix that so that he can do the commodity work. The oddity of it all is that he's not the hardest things. If you said, what are the most best odds for, for success for Zach Wilson? Fourth and 18 or first and 10 swing route? <laughs> and I, I'm not sure that I, which one would you choose. You're That's right. Good. You might choose the fourth and eighteen. That's good. You know, which is insanity. Which is like, what are what are we talking about here? But the odds that he is probably still able to do the hardest things on the field yet can't get better at the commodity work is about Zach. And that I think that's why, Coach. The original question is, why do they keep thinking that he the story's not over? Because the things that are wrong are the things that everybody in the league's doing. Uh, to me, I don't blame Coach for saying, geez, if we could somehow get the commodity stuff figured out, then we could maybe still make a go of this. But it's certainly not, and I, that's where he was right and I was wrong. I don't think ah. playing him, that gets better because it's not anymore. He was right, I was wrong. I mean, there's a reason why they had to sit Zach Wilson, man. And it's not personal, but like, Larry being like, oh, the, the Jets are one and five since they, they chose to go to the playoffs over Zach. Stop it. Zach wasn't getting better by playing. And Steve Young finally watched the Jet game last Thursday for the first time all year, probably start to finish. That's what happened. These analysts were watching every game at once. How often do you think Steve Young actually sat down and watched tape of Zach Wilson start to finish? Now, I mean, uh, what more do you need to hear? All right, that's Zach Truther number one right there, Steve Young acknowledging that the Jets were right to sit Zach Wilson down because he wasn't getting better by playing. Chris says, if we win Sunday, I expect to see you in Miami next Sunday. Chris, I'm I'm debating it. We're, it we're, it's in the works. We've looked in the flights. We're looking at tickets are pretty expensive for that game. Not going to lie. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they go down a, a little bit. But uh, it, the, the, the win in your in trip to Miami, is currently in the works. Alex writes in with a super chat. More of your calls coming up. We have open hotlines. If anyone wants to come in and talk about what Tannenbaum said about Mike White or what you just heard there from Steve Young. Does Derek Carr's historically awful play in the cold struggles in the first year of a new system give you serious pause on him? Really hoping for Rodgers. Yes, it does. Carr, Carr is someone I wouldn't be angry about. I don't know if he's that much better than like Mike White to be honest, Mike White's cheaper. Cars, you're going to have to pay 30 plus million dollars a year. Mike White, three years, 45 million. I don't know. I think he could do it. John writes in, some people question Salo resetting Zach. Funny now how Steve Young admits he needs a reset. Yeah, no bleep. More analysts should watch football. Hey, look, I don't want to pile on Steve Young. I respect the fact that he admitted he was wrong. Most analysts don't. I think Steve Young should get credit for that. It's clear, though, that he had not been watching every Jet game, though. He, he did a total 180 on his take from a week ago where he blamed the Jets for sitting Zach, saying he needs to play through his issues. He can't because he can't complete a fundamental pass right now. That's the problem. And he has no confidence. James writes in, this reminds me of 9 When Rex Ryan said at the podium, we're obviously out of the playoffs. Salah had similar comments. And now here we are with a chance to win out and get in. Cool parallels. 
Yeah, you got to hope this is like 09, right, James? I talked about this the other day. Curtis Painter helped the Jets get into the playoffs that year. Perhaps Tua imploding can help the Jets get into the playoffs this year. Skipper Roo says car is durable. Correct. Not sure about white. Uh, huge question marks with white, for sure. The thing I'll say, though, I don't think it's necessarily fair to completely label Mike White as injury plate or injury prone. Uh, the reason being, the injury he suffered against the Colts was a fluke injury. His, his arm hit a helmet on a pass. He didn't miss the next game. He came back. And then this year, I, I don't know, man. I'd argue anyone who took the hits Mike White took against the Bills would be hurt. So, yeah, look, if he gets hurt again in these next two games, it, it's a legit thing. But I'm not willing to call him injury prone just yet. They said the same thing about Aaron Judge with the Yankees. He's been as durable as any player in baseball for the last two years. Like Aaron Judge, it was held against Aaron Judge that he was injury prone when a bulk of his injuries happened in 2018 when he got hit on the wrist with a pitch. Like that's not Judge's fault. Alex writes in, by the way, while I mentioned possibly letting Rob Calabrese and John Benton go after this year, one coach I would for sure extend is Tony Odin, who will be on the D.C. radar. Odin's done a phenomenal job with the uh, corner room. No doubt about that. Tony Odin's a very underrated coach based on everything you hear. Back to your calls. We go. Let's go to Alex from D.C. Who's up next on our show? Alex, what's going on? What's going on, man? Glad to be back. Hey, I just want two two things real quick. Um, I wanted to just provide a little context to your um, Howie Roseman analogy with Joe Douglas. In fairness, um, his backup quarterback went and re- won a Super Bowl that year, so that kind of bought him some time. You know what I mean? No, no um, question, no question. Yeah. So, um, that and I'm and I'm not saying that because I want Joe out of there. I'm just you know just con- for context. Um, and also as Jet fans, I think we need to want. I you know there's gonna be there's gonna be Carr, there's gonna be Garoppolo, and those guys. But for me, my number one wish is that Mike White proves himself to be our future quarterback like these fantasy stories they happen man like go out win these two games go and you don't need to take us to a super bowl get us to an afc championship play good go into buffalo play good throw for freaking 350 or something and uh and 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 and, and earn your spot you know what i mean like my number one goal is just i want mike white to earn this job you know i don't I, you know and then if he doesn't then we'll look at the exterior guys but until then i'm rooting for mike white Alex, good call, man. A good, very good call. I, I, I think everyone should be rooting for Mike White. Look, I think there's some that are, you know, you know, we call them Zach Wilson truth. There's there are like Mike White sycophants. I think he's like the second coming of Tom Brady. I'm not willing to go that far yet, but I'm willing to give him a shot. Right, we talked about how we need to find out about Zach. Why don't we find out about Mike White? All right, Mike White wouldn't be the first guy that was a late bloomer that finally got an opportunity and took advantage of his moment. Like, it, it, it it's not like Mike White has come in. And it's been fluky. Like, watch the tape. Watch the tape. Mike White has gone out there in his career. And he has shown the ability to play competent football. Is he perfect? No. But the same reason people defended Zach, like I defended Zach, is like, look, he needs more starts. He's young. Mike White has not made a tremendous amount of starts. He started six career games. And one of them, he got cut short with injury in the first quarter against the Colts. So let's see what he could do over these next two games. I agree with Alex. I think it's a great call. The best case scenario for the Jets is Mike White plays well down the stretch. They make the playoffs. And maybe you're like, holy crap, we got our guy. Savage says the biggest problem with this team is offensive line. How can we assure it will get better? Well, you have guys coming off injury for starters, and I think the Jets will use the draft uh, to try and beef up this O line. Mo the Jet fan says Aaron Rodgers and Mike White and Wilson QB three. I'd like that. What do you think? I'd like to date Margot Robbie, Mo. That's what I think about that. I just don't think it's realistic to have all three on the team. If you if you stopped with Aaron Rodgers, I'm good. 
I'll take my chances. You put Aaron Rodgers on this team, they're a Super Bowl contender. They are. Let's keep it rolling here with your comments, your questions, anything Jet-related that is on your mind. Let's pause real quick. I want to talk about sports betting. Hey, I finally saw a win last night. The Islanders won. I was in the building. I'm now 1-3 in three, rooting on my teams since I've been home. So if you bet the Penguins at BUSR, my apologies. You took an L. If you bet on the Jets on Sunday, will you get a W? We'll find out. BUSR.com slash Asman. Sign up and start betting on any sport at any time. Uh, it's bowl season, baby. We got bowl games throughout the afternoon today. So if you're hanging out, please bet on some sports over at BUSR. Uh, USC, U, UCF and Duke in the military bowl. Shout out to our military members. Shout out to the Navy. Shout out once again to Rick and Jeff for hooking me up with this awesome hat. Liberty Bowl, Holiday Bowl, Texas Bowl, Devils Bruins, Nets Hawks. There's your New York sports setup. BUSR.com slash Asman. Bet on any sport. If you're a boxing fan, they have boxing. If you're a UFC fan like I am, they got UFC. Check it out. BUSR.com slash Asman. Sign up and start betting today. Let's keep it rolling here. Muhammad said, Rodgers is a diva. He won't have patience for our young guys. What young guys? He's going to be throwing to Garrett Wilson. I don't care if Garrett Wilson's in the second year. He plays like a 10-year vet. Aaron Rodgers will have patience for anyone who's good, and the Jets clearly have good skill players. Brendan says, Rodgers, Mike White, and Zach would be like an $80 million cap. It's not realistic. That's why I made the joke about Margot Robbie. Alex says, Jake, we need you to break the Knicks losing streak while you're here. I don't know if I can, Alex. I mean, I'm 0-2 at the Garden since I've been home. Saw them lose to end their winning streak last Wednesday. And then on Friday, I saw them against the Bulls completely choke away a game they should have won. Let's go back to your calls. Let's go to Chris, who's up next on our hotline. What's up, Chris? How you doing? Long time listener. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate your super chats as well. Thanks for calling in. Uh, listen, love the show. Absolutely missed it for the last couple of months. So uh, two things. One, you nailed it. Finally, someone's looking at the root cause. So the PFF uh, exclusive stats shows just just to kind of back up your point about the bad uh, offensive line. Dwayne Brown, 70. Now he's playing hurt. He's Herculean in his effort, but he's still 70. Max Mitchell, 73. Fant, 112. Guards, Herbig, 54. Lakin Tomlinson, uh, one of the single worst signings ever of this administration. It just He's healthy. What a great – how much better would the Jets be if Lakin Tomlinson was one of the top five guards – as he was the last three years, if Matt, instead of being number 63, he's below double replacement level, right? So, you know, the Jets can't win. Nobody can win with an offensive line with four out of four, four out of five of the positions playing badly. Yep. Wilson is horrible. He's in his head. But, uh, again, I respectfully disagree. Once you do go to the, over to the cap, you'll see – Pre-June 1, it's $20.3 million. Post-June 1, it's a net of uh, $9 million. You can look it up very simply after the show. So he will be there at camp. He will not be traded. I'll be talking to you the same way I do the Super Chats two years ago, last year, this year, and I'll be doing them next year. And he'll be there. He'll be at training camp. He'll be uh, in third position because you can't piss away $11 million net uh, and still sign a quarterback so i love the show just wanted to give you the pff uh advanced stats and not over the last three or four games have they been bad this is the jets over all of the games our yeah. offensive line is 28 out of 32 and even with mike white who improves the offensive line because he gets rid of the ball much faster 
than Wilson does, we're still only 19th. Yeah, Chris, good call, man. It, it's it, it, the, the line has not been good. It will be better with Mike White because, as you said, and we all see it when he plays, he gets the ball out quick. I'm looking at the Zach Wilson contract now at over the cap, and, and Rich Samini had the breakdown on his podcast. I'll just pull the audio. I, the, the numbers you gave, I don't think you have that right. And, and I, I think Jason, who called in, explained it better than I could. They they Look, they're going to carry a dead cap hit on Zach Wilson if they trade him, but – it's not that significant of a number. It's really not. Like, if they trade him, I'm trying to get the specifics here. I'm not going to comment on it because I don't want to be wrong, but I, that doesn't sound right to me compared to what Rich was saying on his show yesterday when he went through it. So so rather than kind of speculate, I'll just pull that clip and next show we can hear what the financial ramifications would be if they were to actually trade him. Let's go to Jeremy. He's next up on our show. What's up, Jeremy? Hi. What's up, Jake? Jeremy, thanks for calling in, man. Hopefully you're okay driving there. Yeah, and no, I'll be all right. I do this drive. I just want to represent, you know, I uh, had that little uh, moment earlier in the show uh, with your buddy giving you the Arlie Burke hat, so I wanted to call in first time uh, for uh, all our military watchers. Well, Jeremy, thank you. How long have you been in, in the military? Uh, eight years. Wow, congratulations, man. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I pretty I, I don't really disagree much with you. I pretty much agree with everything that you're, that you're saying. I think we give Mike, Mike White a not really super long contract, but, you know, basically a prove-it contract, and then, you know, maybe swing – Swing for the fences, get an Aaron Rodgers for the people that are saying Lamar, which he's not leaving the Ravens, but, you know, get Lamar if you can. Uh, and then maybe somebody else like a Gardner Minshew or Jacoby Percet as like a backup option. But and then I don't think I think the writings on the wall seller pretty, pretty much already said it. Um, I don't think they're getting rid of Zach Wilson. They I think they're going to keep him on the back burner, try to develop him. Because if he goes somewhere else and actually turns out to be amazing, that's a pretty big indictment on on the coaching staff, and I don't think they wanna they wanna do that. But yeah, that, that's just my view on it. Jeremy, thanks for the call, man. And once again, thank you for your service, man. And you know, big shout out to all the people who watch the show who serve in our military or have served in our military as well. I just I'd be a little surprised if they kept him. Honestly, I think Sal is saying what he's saying, Jeremy, because he doesn't want to destroy his trade value. I mean, I, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I, I don't think Joe Douglas is going to continue to double down on a guy that maybe has lost the locker room or maybe New York has has fractured him mentally. I, I don't know. Gun to my head is Zach Wilson on the team next year. I say they trade him. I, I wouldn't be upset if they kept him, but I don't know. I, I feel like the odds are stacked against Zach Wilson being a Jet going into next year. I, I I just I'd be I personally would be surprised. Wouldn't hate it. You could sell me on it. He is talented. He does have ability. I don't know if it's gonna happen with the Jets, though. That's the question. Muhammad said Garrett Wilson complains sometimes. Elijah Moore, Mims, come on, Jake. Garrett Wilson complains because the quarterback plays bad. He's not gonna complain with Aaron Rodgers throwing him the ball. It's a big difference. <laughs> Garrett Wilson wasn't complaining with Mike White throwing him the ball. Why? Because Mike White proved to be competent. Uh, though you can't add Aaron Rodgers because the jet wide receivers are going to complain is insane. Then you can't add any quarterback if that's the case. Let's go to Kevin. He's up next on our show. What's up, Kevin? Thanks for the call. What's going on, Jake? Hey, as a uh, a guy who's been in the military myself, Jeremy, you can't you can't drive and call in. That's against the safety brief. He knows better. Anyway, so a couple. I, points I'm going to take your make. word on that, Kevin. I mean, I'm sure you're right about that. A couple points I want to make. First of all, I want to say that the the I, the, the Zach Wilson um, doubters are very new and very recent. Can we admit this, Jake? Can we admit it? Because if we're going to beat up Zach truthers, let's all just let's, let's all be honest about this. Up until the Patriots game, and even after the Patriots game, people were saying, "Oh, I think you were even on the stream." We had the pride of the clip of you saying they're not going to bench Zach Wilson for Mike White. 
They're not doing that right now. Also, well, has- which Patriot game though? Because after the second one, I was like, yeah, if they do it, I can't sit here and say I'd be shocked. And I even no. argued that night. I'm like, if Salah was going to go to Mike White to spark the team, I couldn't complain about that either. It, you it know? was the first Patriots game. It was the first Patriots game, and I had to listen to all you guys all through the off season when I was very sour on Zach Wilson say. You, did you guys watch the second half of the season? And I, I was like, yes, I did. But he didn't look that great. Show yeah, well, me the statistics where he looked good. All he did was not throw interceptions. Fair. All, fair, I mean, I mean, fair, but let's put that in context to be fair to Zach. I, I mean, who was he throwing to last year? His best player on the team was Braxton Berrios because Jamison Crowder was hurt. Elijah Moore was hurt. Corey Davis was hurt. The starting offensive line was hurt. He had no Tyler Croft was hurt. And so they were on Daniel Brown as their lead tight end. Like, yes, he, he wasn't great, but he obviously was a lot better than he was in his first nine games and after the first Patriot game I didn't think they should have been sacked because he had a bad game against Belichick up until that point he was then five and one at the starter at that point or four and one at that point he didn't look good through the whole season though and that's what we're calling insane before this like I guess the Jets were winning because of the defense but he was watch the Broncos game I mean it was a a disaster yes you, you you are right Kevin but one I don't think anyone knew Mike White was capable of playing how he did and two he was still the second pick in the draft coming off injury you needed the play to find out unfortunately we found out it's not the answer we wanted of course but you couldn't it after the first pats game was not the time to bench Zach, especially when he played reasonably well the next week and they beat the bills all i'm saying is there are reports obviously that he wasn't good at camp i mean I, and i'm just saying through the season it looked kind of verified to me and and we held on we held on we held on and finally shot ourselves in the foot and then we went back to him against the Lions and the Jaguars. That's totally on the front office, by the way. Well, totally hold, on on the front hold on, hold on, Kevin. They had to go back to him because Mike White got hurt. Why? Mike, Wait, why do you, you go back to Zach Wilson? Who gives you the best opportunity to win the football game? Not Zach Wilson. You want a Joe Wilson. Flacco to start against the Lions and the Jaguars? Uh, maybe you have a Chris Drevler package with Joe Flacco. I, uh, all I know is you you can't put Zach Wilson in there. We watched that, and we watched two games that we needed to win, lose. I mean, do you go to him on the Jaguars game? Why do you go to him after watching the Lions game? He wasn't good in the Lions game. I mean, I, he, I, I, he, he wasn't was he wasn't awful against them. He wasn't good, but like he was not the ultimate reason why they lost that game. I, I mean, he put him in position to win that game, to be fair to Zach. That's a minute. It was a Hail Mary by the front office. It wasn't, though, Kevin. Zach Kevin Wilson. Yes, it was. Kevin. It, Kevin, it was not a Hail Mary by the front office. You literally had no choice but to go back to Zach Wilson because Mike White got hurt. The front office agreed with you. The There's coaches three quarterbacks said, on the roster, Jake. You had a, you had a choice. They were not going to be. They were not beating the Lions with Joe Flacco. They weren't, and they were not going to beat the Jaguars with Joe Flacco. They beat it with Zach Wilson. We know that. So yeah, but they had to, uh, Kevin. They had no choice but to go back to Zach Wilson at that point. It doesn't make any sense. They the the Jets agreed with you after the second Patriot game. They admitted he's not any good. They cut him or they benched him. Excuse me. They sat him down. They sat him down after the second Patriot game. They went to Mike White. And Mike White was going to play the rest of the season if he didn't get hurt. So what are we talking about here? You're blaming the Jets for playing Zach against the Lions? What choice did they have? You're going to tell me you're going to start Joe Flacco against the Lions? Stop it. Stop it. Ultimately, you were not high on Zach. You're going to end up likely being right that he's not a good quarterback. But I got news for you, Kevin. They had to find out what he was. Just because you didn't think he was good does not mean that the Jets could then say, well, Kevin thinks he stinks, so we can't play him anymore. That's it. He he had to play a little more. They couldn't bench him after the first Patriot game, which also, Kevin, wouldn't have made any sense because to Zach's credit, yes, we give Zach Wilson credit when it's deserved. He played a good game against the Bills the next week, and they won. And then the second Patriot game happened, and you couldn't keep going. So they went to Mike White and would have continued to stick with Mike White had he not gotten hurt. And by the way, I know Zach Wilson was not great against the Lions. He's not the ultimate reason why they lost. They lost that game because of Braden Mann and the defense folding like a cheap suit with the game on the line, fourth and one against Jared Goff after they had a 17-13 lead late. And they lost that game because the head coach decided to keep his timeouts because he was saving them for Christmas for his kids. All right, so look, I'm no Zach Wilson, like, defender by any means. I call it how it is. But the idea that, you know, the Jets made a mistake going back to Zach against Detroit is nonsense. You could not start Joe Flacco in that game. You couldn't. And against the Jaguars, you could not start Joe Flacco in the cold, in the rain. Zach was their best option. He stunk. You want to criticize Salah for not benching Zach earlier? 
I think that's fair criticism. He should have been benched at halftime. They should have started the second half with Strebler. But enough. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Ben Sack after the first Patriot game. I mean, at that point, he was 4-1 and one as a starter. It's unfortunate how it played out. But you needed to see it play out the way it unfortunately did, so we have clarity on Zach Wilson. All right, Socrates Johnson, we're putting in timeout. Stop spamming the chat. It's very annoying. Like I see it here, uh, Jake was defending 100 passing yards per game, saying that's all we needed. That's not what I was saying, Socrates. That's not what I was saying at all. My whole point with Zach Wilson was, even though he was not playing well in some of these wins, to me at the time, I thought he was the best option on the team. And I wanted to give him more time as the second pick in the draft to develop. He didn't have a training camp. He came back and he played well in the fourth quarter against Pittsburgh. He was good against Miami. He struggled in wins over Green Bay and Denver. I'd be the first to tell you he didn't play good in those games, but I wasn't going to bench him. It's enough. The revisionist history by someone in this fan base is embarrassing. Let's go to Vinny. Vinny, you're up next on the Gus Buster Hotline. Jake, how's everything? Been better, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the Jet season's alive, so like, we can't complain too badly. No, I'm grateful for that. I, I just wanted to make a point with Kevin. Kevin is um, that Jets fan I noticed uh, from his background that tried to make headlines last week that he actually went down to the tunnel um, where the players exit and leave the stadium after the Jaguar game and actually called out Joe Douglas and nearly got attacked by him. So he's another part of the problem with this fan base was why we get labeled as being a toxic fan base, and we're not. Where it's like you said, we're probably the most loyal fan base in all of sports. I mean, we haven't won anything in 53 years. And if anything, if you're a true Jets fan right now, you should be excited. We're playing our most meaningful game in December since that debacle in Buffalo with Todd Bowles in tw back in, what was it, 2015? Mm -hmm. So granted, the whole Zach Wilson thing, yeah, it didn't work out. Why he was put in there, it's not because, like, what did he call it, the Hail Mary by the front office? It's just he was still the second overall pick. You're still trying to give him a chance to prove himself. At the end of the day, it didn't work out. Fine, but you got to put out the best player that gives you the best chance to win. And at that point in the Jaguar game, they reached for Strebler because Joe Flacco is at the point in his career. He doesn't want to play football anymore. You saw it in his face in the Buffalo game when Mike White got knocked out of the game. He's just like, well, what are you looking at me for? And then this first place, bam, he gets fumbled. I'm like, yeah, but, but, apparently, but apparently the Jets were wrong because they didn't start Flacco that Thursday night against the Jaguars after what we saw from Flacco against the Buffalo Bills, as you just brought up, video, or they didn't start him against the Lions. Like, come on, man. Hey, Kevin, I appreciate your passion as a Jet fan, but, like, that call is ridiculous. Like, Zach didn't work out, but the whole point of this year was to find out if he could be the guy. And, unfortunately, we got the answer we didn't want, but at least we got the answer. I, I agree 100%. As far as Joe Flacco goes, I would have left him in Buffalo as soon as that game was over. Whatever money the Jets front office owes that guy, at this point, I'd cut him a check and send him home. He doesn't want to play football anymore. I'd rather activate Strevler, not so much as just being a backup quarterback, but he could be like your Taysom Hill and create another dynamic for the offense and be another weapon out there. Why the hell not? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Vinny. Good call. I, I would have uh, Strebler active. I think he will be active. I think there's some gamesmanship going on when Salah talked about how, oh, you know, we might not be able to do it because of some roster gymnastics. Strebler should be active. You failed to run the ball effectively, and he came into this game last Thursday night, and he was your leading rusher. He had 54 yards rushing. Strebler should be out there uh, as part of a, you know, a Brad Smith-like package. Ricky, you're up next on our show. What's up, Ricky? Ah, uh, Ricky, your mic again. We can't hear you. Restart the browser. We'll come back to you right away when we see you. Um, ja writes in, Minshew, or so White, Minshew, Zach, they only need competent quarterback play. Uh, I don't hate that idea. I don't think they would carry those three quarterbacks, though. That's a lot of salary cap invested into three guys. I'd be surprised. We have open lines for anyone who wants to join in. Uh, Zach Truthers, please call in. You never do. I wonder why. Uh, let's see. 
TC says Jets need a QB coach. Maybe they need a quarterback, TC. I don't know. Rob Calabrese done a pretty good job developing Mike White. Just saying. Doesn't fit the narrative, though. Wild Wave says Zach's five and four. Quarterback wins means nothing because Zach Wilson's five and four and he's terrible. So what does that mean? Zach Wilson's one and four since Brees Hall got hurt. Ricky, let's see if we got your mic fixed. What's up, Ricky? Uh, not a lot, Jay. Can you hear me now? All we right. got you. Great. Uh, you know what? I... I'd, I'd like to offer a little bit of context on uh, the whole Zach Will Wilson implosion thing. Uh, remember in that first Patriots game, like he had a run where he took a helmet to helmet hit that didn't get called. And in the second game, he took a hands to the face that also didn't get called. Uh, it, it's been years ago now. So, I mean, it, it doesn't have to do with, with this team, but it does have to do with the Patriots. I had a player that played for the Jets tell me that, that those guys hit dirty. Like, and, I, and I didn't personally see it, but he said, you know, when they tackle you, it seems like they're aiming for elbow joints. They're aiming to hurt you. And a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, on one of the morning football shows, uh, Jason McCourty, who played for the Patriots, said, whenever it's Jets week, there are signs in the locker room, the hallway, that say, beat the mother effing Jets hanging everywhere. And you know what? Uh, putting that all together and, and considering the fact that Zach got hurt against the Patriots and then he was taking dirty shots, I think that's what crumbled him mentally. Uh, I really do. Uh, you know, like I said, just kind of trying to put it all into context and, and figure out why did a guy so talented go so terribly wrong? I, I don't think that can be discounted. Uh, at any rate, you know, it, it, it's, it's sad that it didn't work out. That being said, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm, all for Mike White, you know, he's he's been good in the games that he started. And, uh, you know, we've seen lots of other, you know, backup quarterbacks come in and be great. But we need a bigger sample size. You know, we can't anoint him the savior. You know, what happened? You know what happens when you do that with a small sample size? It was like uh, when Burnell got hurt in Jacksonville. Rob Johnson played a couple of big uh, good games and the Bills gave him this big contract and he stunk. He was terrible. Uh, so we do need a bigger sample size from him. But you know what? It's worth it. You, just when you see how our guys respond to him, it is worth it. Yep. Ricky, good call, man. Thank you for calling in. Uh, look, it, we, unfortunately, you don't have a huge sample size. Even if Mike White plays these next two games, we're still talking about what? Three starts last year. We're talking about a total of five starts this year. So they're going to have to make a decision on Mike White based on eight starts. To me, that's enough because they've been around him the last couple of years. They know how the locker room has responded to him. They know about his work ethic and all that. So we'll see. I believe if Mike White gets the Jets into the playoffs, he's the week one starter next year. That's my feeling on it as we have two games to go here with the Jets needing to win both to get in. Uh, let's see. And by the way, Ricky's point about the Patriots and Zach Wilson, uh, it, 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 it's, it's true. I mean, you look at Zach Wilson's career, the three worst games of his career all happened against the Patriots. A home opener last year, he threw four picks. The first game at MetLife this year. And obviously the game in Foxborough this year. Those are the three worst games of Zach Wilson's career, in my opinion. You want to say this Jaguars game was up there too? That's fine. But at that point, I think he was broken already. The Patriots broke him. I, I think there's something to that. Someone says you, you look like Howard Stern, Ricky. That's a pretty good compliment. Bang Mateo writes in, White and Flacco, Jets only dress two quarterbacks. Strebler can't throw. He can't throw, but he's useful as a Wildcat quarterback. 
You have to at least account for him to throw because he is a quarterback bang. I wouldn't say he can't throw. He's not a great thrower. We we know he's he's got obvious limitations. I think it's worth carrying him as an active member of the team. He can help you on special teams as well. Derek writes in, is their O-line coach to blame for the running game? No, I think it's the amount of injuries they've had to the offensive line. And I think it's the ineffectiveness of guys they were counting on to be good. Lakin Tomlinson has not been a good signing. Hasn't worked out. Bang says, Matt Flynn, the small sample size king in payday. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that, that's a name that's going to be compared to Mike White. But, you know, I, I got to look at exactly how many games Matt Flynn played. I mean, he had that one start in, like, week 17, if you guys recall. I think it was against the Lions. Like, Aaron Rodgers was the offensive coordinator. But, like, Matt Flynn, that that, that was literally based on one game started. That's crazy. Mike White's a little different. You're talking about a guy who played last year well, has played this year well. Mike White and Matt Flynn, that's the name that's going to come up, but it, it's its not the same thing. I just checked. Matt Flynn literally played that at one start. At one start, got him paid. And in that one start, he threw for 518 yards, six touchdowns, two interceptions, and completed 67% of his passes. Matt Flynn. What a callback. I forgot how good that, that Matt Flynn start was. Wow. Say says, do the Jets have to replace the wide receiver coach? Well, yeah, because he's suspended for a year. Whoever the assistant wide receiver coach is, I'm sure is now the acting wide receiver coach because Miles Austin apparently bet on sports and has been suspended for a year. All right, a couple more here, then we'll get out of here. We've gone for almost two hours here on a Wednesday. Let's go to Rusty Rages. He's up next on our show. What's up, Rusty? Hey, uh, I was just it was it was poker. It was a poker game. That's what he was betting on. Oh, yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, they, he got he got suspended for betting on poker. Silly, man. It's it's so it's a dumb rule, but rules are the rules, man. Like if you're in the NFL, you gotta know better. Yeah, you do. Um I I like Mike White. I, I think Mike White can be this can be the starting quarterback if he plays well the last two games. I really do. I, I would I would use Strebler as a running back package because we need something to help us in the running in the running game. Agreed. I I think you know if you have like a third and short, you know fourth fourth, you know if you need a quarterback sneak, Mike White's kind of frail. I feel like Strebler would be the guy you could bring in. You know, goal line quarterback mm-hmm. sneak, run the offense a little bit. So there, to me, there's there's tremendous value in, in having him at least active and making Seattle have to prepare for what he could bring to the table. I know we need an offensive tackle, but in the draft, would you draft Bijan Robinson? Uh, not in the first round, no. No, all right. Because no. I, I do, I think he is a generational running back, and him and Brees Hall as a one-two punch. Oh my goodness, I think that would be. You have too many other needs, though. Like I, I rather. Use oh, that I know. Yeah. Lineman. Yeah. We do need a linebacker. Also, where are you getting Bijan? Because I I don't think the Jets are going to be in Bijan territory. To be honest, sounds like Bijan Robinson could be like the first running back in several years to go in the top ten, even. He he might. I've seen between fifteen to twenty for him. That's, yep. that's most mocks I've seen him. 15, that's where we're gonna be is fifteen to twenty if you don't move up and get into the playoffs. Yeah, no question. Good call, Rusty Rages. I, I would pass on a running back. They have Maurice Hall. They have Michael Carter. They have Bam Knight. I'm good. They need offensive tackle. They need another guard, linebacker. Say, there's too many other positions of need before I would go running back in the first round again. I have no issue with taking a running back every year in the mid rounds though. In fact, you look at the NFL, a lot of the best backs in the league were not first round picks, obviously, but you can't go first round running back. Shout out to TC. He's watching us from Korea. Thank you, TC. Carly writes in Mike white, got his kids, mini range rovers for Christmas. His daughters is hot pink. That's my quarterback. We love a family, man. You know, it's funny. We talk about Mike White, and like I think some Jet fans probably don't realize. You know, he's 27 years old. He's not old. <laughs> he's 27. Uh, Mike White Mike White could absolutely, if he plays well, be here for the long term. 
You know, this is not Fitz at the end of his career, having a renaissance year in 2015. Not Vinny T towards the end of his career, having a renaissance year in 98. You know, this is a guy that's young enough to be your long-term answer. Let me put Mike White's age in proper context. You guys know how old Joe Burrow is? He's 26. Mike White's 27. Patrick Mahomes is 27. SB3 writes in with a super chat. Good morning, Jake. O-line better be ready because Pete Carroll's blitz happy coach and will be coming with a statue. I, I think calling Mike White a statue is also unfair. He gets the ball out quick. Joe Flacco's a statue. Mike White's time to throw is significantly better than Zach Wilson. And Zach Wilson is not a statue, as we know. He's athletic. And Mike White has very good numbers against the Blitz as well. So I hope they Blitz Mike White. Because I think the Jets can then get the ball out quickly to some of their playmakers in space. Jimmy says, the O-line needs some work, but it'll be ready next year. It does need some work, but you could fix an O-line. Boomtown says, Jake, great Islanders game for you to take in last night. Finally saw a win, Boomtown. I know. Islanders played great last night. They really did. You know, they came out. They got the first goal early. Andrews Lee scored. Then they should have went up 2-0, but the goal was uh, was called off uh, off sides on the Islanders. And then Pittsburgh tied it at one. And from there, I mean, the Islanders scored, what, four unanswered? Sorokin was good last night. Power play got going a little bit. I mean, it was a very encouraging win for the Islanders who won two straight. They're a good team. They, they, you know, they they got out to a shaky start. Then they had the nice winning streak. Then they cooled off a little bit. So they're, they're, you know, they're out of the playoff line right now, playoff cut line. They're a good team. James says Mike White's a franchise quarterback. From your lips, like God's ears, he is. Disinfo says Shrebler could be a good weapon in the red zone. I, I agree. Quarterback sneak, bring in Strebler. Third and one, bring in Strebler. Jason says, thoughts on Lamar Jackson? Not sure Baltimore can survive the tag after year after year. Well, Lamar is on his fifth-year option right now. They could tag him this offseason, then tag him again. I believe they're going to pay him, though. If they're dumb enough to not pay them, the Jets should absolutely call. I just don't find it realistic. The Assassin says, you have to cut Lawson, Braxton, Corey Davis, and Dwayne Brown next year. All possible. All possible. I think Corey Davis, I I like him when he plays. He doesn't play enough. Dwayne Brown, I think, will retire. FM says, how about Matt Ryan as a backup to Mike White? Mm, Maybe. Matt Matt Ryan might be shot. Who knows if he even wants to still play. V-Man with a super chat. Off topic, did you ever think you'd see the day Russell Wilson would get roasted by, by Patrick? By the way, up for my proposal, I sent you on Twitter. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about, me, man. The uh, the Nickelodeon broadcast where Patrick Starr was on as Russell Wilson threw a pick. That was very funny. That was very funny. I'll check my DMs later, V-Man. Do I think the Isles are a playoff team? Yes, I do. Really, I they, 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 they could have been last year if they didn't get screwed with the 13-game road trip to start the year. COVID absolutely dismantling the team. Like the NHL shut down their season for every other team when they got COVID. But when the Islanders were the guinea pig late November, early December, they played on. So it is what it is. Last year to me was was more about the circumstances more so than the Islanders not being a, a, a capable playoff team after they were in the conference finals in back-to-back years. I, I think they're a playoff team this year. David says, what happened to Marcus May? He's on the Saints. Thanks for the kind words about the show, David. Uh, Sean says, I would do play action and roll out to the tight end every single time on the goal line. Hey, it worked against the Lions. CJ Uzama was wide open. 
Rich wants to know, am I going ice skating tomorrow? No, I don't ice skate. Rusty Rage says, by the way, you said we have all these running backs, but what has Michael Carter done since Hall went down? Bam Knight had one really good game and came back down to earth. I'll give you the stats why the running game has been terrible. The offensive line has been awful. Dwayne Brown, Lakin Tomlinson, Connor McGovern, and Nate Herberg all rank in the bottom five in run block win rate over the past two games at their respective positions. Dwayne Brown is dead last among qualified tackles. 67 out of 67. Lakin Tomlinson is 65 out of 68. I don't think it's the running backs. I think it's the offensive line. Tony says, Jake and Carly, new figure skating duo. Not happening. Justin says, Jake, who do you take next year, free agent, quarterback, or trade? I mean, if I could pick one, it's Aaron Rodgers. I, 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 I don't know how realistic that is. I don't know if Green Bay is going to move off of Rodgers. But you call. I mean, you certainly call if you're the Jets. Christopher says, Jake Rants are awesome. Thank you, Christopher. Appreciate that. Story Lynn's got a super chat. If Mike White loses, he's done. Let's bring in the veteran. I mean, that if, if they fail to make the playoffs, gun to my head, chances are they probably do that, Story Lynn. But I'm rooting for Mike White. He's got an unbelievable opportunity. Barney with a super chat says, Jets went out. Mike White is QB1 for life. True or false? He's QB1 for life. I'm going to say false. Wayne says, if the Jets win Sunday, make a snow angel in a Jets jersey. Uh, perhaps we could do that for you, Wayne. We shall see. Let's see. Carl says, I'd be happy with White starting game one next year. I'd rather beef up the O-line and safety in free agency. Uh, it depends how he plays these next two games. And do the Jets make the playoffs? How does he look in a playoff game? What's exciting about Mike White is he has the opportunity of his life. He does. And the Jets themselves have a second lease on life. As disappointing as it is to feel like you missed with Zach Wilson, at least your season's still alive. You have a chance. After it felt like the season was dead on Thursday, it's nice to have that shot. It's nice to have that scenario where you have a chance. We got a big super chat from Ab Lab. What's up, Ab Lab? Thank you so much, my friend. Happy holidays, J.A. Speaking of hypothetically, if Mike White balls out these next two games and his play takes us to the championship game, and Joe Douglas decides that the veteran quarterback field is not it. What are your thoughts on Mike White being quarterback one, Zach quarterback two, and draft pick at three? I think if they went to the championship game with, with Mike White at quarterback, they would trade Zach Wilson. He He's never getting the job back if Mike White led this team to the championship game. You know what I mean? I, so I understand your point in theory, Ablav, but I think they would trade Zach at that point. He would have no future here. I mean, think about think about what you're saying. Mike White balls out these next two games and his play takes him to the championship game. I think Zach's gone at that point. Why would they keep him? I think it's Mike White unquestionably starting for the Jets and bring in a competent veteran, Jacoby Brissett, Gardner Minshew, Colt McCoy, someone like that is your backup. Could you imagine, though, if Mike White takes this team to the championship game Could you imagine? Oh, my God, Abla. From your, from your super chat to uh, the football God's ears. Christopher says, I needed this live because I'm sick over that Nick loss last night. Thankfully, I, I didn't see it. Like I was listening on the radio driving back from the Islander game last night. Good Lord. that uh, How did the Knicks blow that? I know Luke is amazing, but come on, man. They're up nine with like a, a minute 30 to go, and they lost. Awful. 
Awful. And it's a pretty good effort by the Knicks, all things considered, because no Brunson. RJ got hurt in this game. He didn't come back, but brutal. Ricky wants Daniel Jones. Ricky, I don't think the Giants are going to let him go. Frank says, if the Bills lose this week, they likely rest starters. Disagree, Frank. Because Kansas City is still going to need to win, win out to get the one seed because Buffalo has the tiebreaker. I don't think the Bills are going to rest their starters. Um... A lot of talk about the Knicks with, an, with a, a meltdown. Rich wants to know, Rich, you wrote this like seven times, so I'll answer because I'm a fan of yours. Do I know Nick Wright? Yes, but not well. <laughs> YBR says, appreciate your hustle. Well, thank you for watching. At this point, we might as well go till two hours. We've gone for an hour and 55 minutes. The reason why the shows have been longer this week and why we've done seven shows in three days is I don't have radio responsibilities this week. I'm on vacation. Barney says, do the Bills want the one seed with that weather? Yeah. The weather is an advantage for them. They're used to it. They play in Buffalo. They're used to the cold. You want teams to have to go to Orchard Park in a big game. Of course the Bills want the one seed, Barney. The last couple of years, they've had to go to Arrowhead where they've lost. I think Bills fans would tell you they'd feel a lot more confident in their team's chances of winning that game if it was at home. Hawk wants to know, do I know David Wright? <laughs> I do know David Wright, actually. I met David Wright at the uh, PGA Championship at Beth Page in 2019. Couldn't have been nicer. Introduced him to my stepdad, who's a, a big Mets fan. V-Man with a super chat, so I got to read it, even though this is absurd. Jake and Carly sauce is more likely than skating. You're not wrong, V-Man. I'm not skating. I haven't skated in years, and I don't feel like falling on my ass and being sore for the next five days that I'm home from Houston. Rob writes in, humor me. Mike White goes 6-0, five years, 200 million. So 6-0 would be what? The Super Bowl, right? Two wins in the regular season, four in the playoffs? Sure. I'll humor, I'll humor you, Rob. Thank you for the super chat. Boomtown says, Jake, do you check in and listen to your Houston radio shows while you're on vacation? So normally, yes, but as a station, we're off this week, so we're airing ESPN programming, ESPN National, ESPN Radio. So we don't even have any, other than like one show. Our, my, my friend Paul Gallant, who uh, doesn't have any vacation days left, so he's actually working this week doing his midday show. Everyone else on our station is on vacation. So normally I listen in, but... There's nothing to listen to this week. Frank says, remember that time the Bills gave Rob Johnson a boatload of money after winning a few games with the Jaguars? I do. I think it's a little different, though, with Mike White, to be honest. Much more of a sample size. All right, a couple more, then we get out of here. FM says, we have to pay Greg the leg. Yeah, I think they should bring him back, no doubt. I think they will bring him back. He's had a very good year. Richard from Jersey says, this Jets defense could bring us to the championship game. Not without good quarterback play. When you're facing the Bills or the Chiefs wild card weekend, I don't care how good your defense is. When you're facing Mahomes and Allen in a playoff game, you need good quarterback play or you can't win. You know, people talk about how Mark Sanchez was carried by the Jets to the championship games. And, and yeah, in the regular season, no doubt. But look at Sanchez's playoff numbers. Uh, Mark Sanchez's career playoff rating is like 92. So he elevated his game in the big games, even though we know Mark Sanchez was not a great quarterback. He was a game manager at best in the regular season. So this defense can win you playoff games, but not without good quarterback play. And honestly, we've said average quarterback play. We get the Jets into the playoffs. 
above average quarterback plays the only way this team can win playoff games if they get there. Will says Jared Goff if the Lions release him. They're not going to release him. They would trade him if anything, and I'm not convinced. Malcolm says Teddy Bridgewater is starting against the Patriots. I mean, when you hear Tua being in concussion protocol, again, this shouldn't surprise anyone. He has another concussion. It's just, what, third concussion this year? He might not play again. So if the Jets handle their business, it could be Mike White versus Teddy Bridgewater for a spot in the playoffs next Sunday. That's breaking news, though. I see as of three minutes ago, Teddy Bridgewater announced as the starter. The Assassin, I'd love if you could change your name because this is a family show, but you paid for the comments and so we'll read it. Quentin Grimes will be a future all-star book it. There's a reason why they didn't want to include him in the Donovan Mitchell trade. I, 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 so I consider myself pretty lucky. I live in Houston, obviously. I covered Quentin Grimes in college. He's a stud, dude. That was a big game by him last night. Unfortunately, it was wasted because the Knicks couldn't find a way to win because Luka Doncic went, you know, Michael Jordan on steroids in the second half of this game. Carly says she feels bad for Tua. I, I think we all should feel bad for Tua from a human standpoint. I mean, here's a guy that, you know, is now dealing with a third concussion this year. Just tough. Another one from AbLab. AbLab, thank you, my friend. Appreciate your super chats. Regarding my last scenario, if we trade Zach Wilson and add a veteran, should we still take a quarterback three in the draft, right? JD uses a trade asset to move up and take Richardson thoughts. I don't think he would do that, AbLab. I, I don't think the Jets are going to pour more resources in the draft to a quarterback. Maybe in the mid-rounds, but Anthony Richardson's going in the first round. So rather than use your own first round pick to get a tackle, get a linebacker, safety, get a guard. You're going to use it on a developmental quarterback. It does not seem likely the Jets do that in a make or break year for the organization next year. I'd be a little surprised. Super Leroy with a dumbass comment here. Even though I still like Seattle to end our season. You root against the Jets every week, dude. It's enough. They still stink. So, so does Miami. So, Mike White won't be educating us on anything. You're wrong, Super Leroy. Because Zach Wilson stunk against two bad defenses. And we learned a lot about him. Mike White should be able to go out there and play well. And if he plays well and they win, you're learning about him. What a dumb comment. He won't be able to educate us on anything. Get out of here with that nonsense. Ty, you, you've had the dumbest comments today outside of that Larry guy. Enough. Cordell says, Mike White can do it, but remember how hard is it to heal any rib injury? Tough situation for Mike and the Jets. Cordell, you're spot on. He's not at 100%, but he's their best option. So they have no choice. They have no choice. He gives them their best option. And, that, and that's really what it comes down to. I'm not willing to tell you Mike White's this great quarterback. I have hope that he could be competent. I have hope that he could be better than that. We need to see more. The idea you can't learn about Mike White playing in two pressure playoff games, essentially, for the Jets here is a joke, though, by that last comment. Not the Super Chat, the one before that. These are playoff games for the Jets. They lose, they're eliminated. There's a playoff game on Sunday. You can't learn about Mike White in a playoff scenario? What are we talking about here? Matthew says it's easier to picture the Dolphins defeating the Patriots with Teddy Bridgewater. Look, it, it's harder to envision it, but Miami still could win that game with Teddy. You know, it's not like they're playing um, Christian Hackenberg on Sunday in Tua's place. You know, they're, they're not playing Luke Falk in uh, Tua's place. And Teddy Bridgewater is competent. Malcolm says, if we get to the playoffs, nobody's going to want to play us. I, I mean, if they get to the playoffs, the Chiefs and the Bills are going to be uh, probably seven to seven and a half point favorites over the Jets. The, 
the reality is, could the Jets compete? Yeah, they have the defense to do it. Comes down to quarterback play. All right, we've gone for over two hours here. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much to everyone who called in today. Thank you to everyone for the super chats. Appreciate all of you. I can't believe it's only Wednesday still. You know, I know the Jets played Thursday, so this week feels like it's taking forever. But eventually, Sunday will be here, and the Jets and the Seahawks will essentially be playing a major, major playoff game. Hey, reminder, this show and every show we post is now on Patreon. So if you want more of me, sign up for my Patreon. It's just five bucks a month. So for all you who give super chats, consider Patreon. Patreon, you'll get this show and every show on YouTube ad-free. You'll get exclusive Patreon podcasts every month that won't air on YouTube. Plus, you can message me directly on Patreon. And when we launch the merch store, you'll get discounts on all the items that we're going to be selling in the merch store. So big thanks to everyone who took time to watch either live or after the fact. Please do me a favor and hit the like button on your way out of here and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go Jets, everybody. Another day closer to kickoff. And it'll be very fascinating to see how the rest of this year certainly plays out. Everyone have a good Wednesday. I'll talk to you guys soon.